My name is Mary Mann, and thank you for joining us in the Czech Center Museum in Houston for the exhibition Czech on the Moon. Uh, here with me is uh, Mr. Cher Eugene Chernan, daughter, Mrs. Tracy Chernan Billy, yeah. and she donated vast amount of awards, books, medallions for the Czech Center. Uh, may I ask you some questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why did you choose the Czech Center Museum in Houston to donate your father memorabilia? Did your father mention this place to keep part of his legacy here? Yes, he did. He had donated um, some things in the past to the museum, uh, some pictures and stuff, and um, so when um, Daddy had always gathered a few things uh, that as he acquired them that he thought um, he would like to show and, and be able to show his heritage and let other people see. And so when he passed away, I looked for some things and um, there were a lot of things that I wanted to other people to be able to experience. So that's why he's very, he was very proud of his heritage, just like Czechoslovakian heritage. So that's why I chose to bring some things here. Okay. So you just mentioned that your father had a Czech and Slavic, Slavic uh, heritage and he traveled many times to countries ancestors. Uh, did you and other relatives travel with him? Yes, so Daddy went, um, as I'm sure most people know, 1974, right after his last flight in um, 1972. So he traveled, he was actually um, there on business through the um, the uh, Paula Soyuz mission, mm -hmm. so came down, and he had taken on his last flight, he had taken a Czechoslovakian flag. Mm -hmm. So he took it and presented it there, which I guess it wasn't received very well, um, I believe um, probably because it was still under Soviet um, mm -hmm. rule of reign. But um, he presented the flag there, left there, I believe the flag went to the Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. um, but then we then came back again 20 years later in 1994 mm -hmm. and I traveled with him as well as my aunt and um, it was a really totally different kind of experience because we were welcomed with open arms, uh, very exciting, lots of um, activities and events for us. We were able to go to our family's uh, home where his grandparents we're from and we met extended family members and were able to sit down and we saw the graves and the churches and all the different areas of the beautiful you countryside. You went to the mass also. We went to, mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We went to the mass and, and it, was, um, it was a really enlightening experience to actually meet our relatives and see where our roots came from because mm -hmm. that was the first time that my aunt had been there too. Mm -hmm. So that was. A what about trip to, of your daughter to Czech Republic? Then my daughter, when she was 16, Daddy went back. He was invited um, then by President Havlin, mm -hmm. and so they went back. And um, she was 16, and um, so it was a it was a ex very great experience for them to be able to travel together. Um, but they went, and she was able then to experience and see the countryside and of course she cannot wait to go back that's mm -hmm. on her bucket list but um, and also to meet a lot of um, they met some again family members and um, got to see where our actual roots started so. okay well, okay now talk about you what was the like to be a daughter of the famous astronaut Eugene Chernin <laughs> Well, you know, um, Daddy flew when I was three, six, and nine. Aww. So um, I kind of grew up in the space program. He was selected when I was just six months old. We moved to Houston. Um, and so I, um, that was kind of my, that was all my family um, and, ex and friends. We grew up amongst all the astronaut children and amongst um, all the astronaut families. Mm -hmm. You know, one lived across the street, down the street, around the corner. And still to this day, um, Alan Bean's daughter, Amy, is one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. So we're still, it's been friends for over 50 years. But, um, so it was, it was 
not that much different than someone else's dad having a business or going on a doing business things because we all did the same things. There was always a different dad that maybe spoke to our class about the spice flight. You know, your dad came one month, you know, Mr. Bean came another month, Mr. Collins came another month, you know. So they all kind of alter, you know, kind of alternated and it wasn't that unusual. I wasn't mm -hmm. the only one. Um, but there were lots of exciting things. I mean, daddy's flights as a kid, um, I can remember, and, and a lot of it is what children would be excited about. I got piles and piles of mail. Now, young kids today would know what that is because we don't do mail. Yeah. But <laughs> bags of <laughs> mail of children wanting to be my pen pal uh, from all over the country and, and wanting to do things with me. So that was just really neat. We had a red phone in our um, office, in Daddy's office, that went directly to Mission Control mm -hmm. so that if there was a problem or something, they could call us. And in fact, on one of the missions, actually, I actually talked to him on the phone. You could, they could connect us through, which was really a neat, mm -hmm. a very neat experience. Um, another thing is after his flight in Apollo 17, I was able to, um, go to the White House with them and actually spent my 10th birthday at Camp David, you know, which is something that, you know, no, very few people, very few people get to, you would have the opportunity to do. Also flew on, um, on Air Force Two. They did a um, tour after every flight, they would do, do promotional tours. And so, Daddy's, uh, their flight being the last one, they did a flight around the uh, equator. And so I met them in Hawaii and then flew, got to fly home on Air Force Two, which was at the age of 10, that's a pretty <laughs> exciting <laughs> thing. But you know, I have to say that I always would say, you know, I always thought, you know, Daddy traveled all the time, he trained. So during the week, he trained all week and he was usually gone. On the weekends, he was there every weekend. We did family stuff. Mm -hmm. We did father-daughter stuff. He didn't miss things. Um, and so when he would travel and he'd go to the moon, I was like, well, you know, he's, everybody's dad goes on a business trip. Daddy just goes sometimes a little bit farther. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so as far as my childhood, I don't think of it as being that much extraordinary. Uh, you know, just compared it to a little bit, a little more extraordinary things, but. No, but you said that only few people were in the Cup David, but you are the only person. Is your name written on the moon? My initials are written on the moon. Uh, okay. T T D C. Yeah, Teresa Don Cernan. Can so, you tell us more about it? <laughs> so, um, you know, it was an afterthought for Daddy. He was, um, uh, they were about to lift off. So they go and Hartley Rover uh, with the camera mounted on it to be able to take the picture of the lunar module lifting off. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that point, there he gets out of the rover, he sets the cameras, they're all ready to take the image, and he thought, he looked down and thought, I'm gonna write Tracy's initials on the map. So he just leaned down and wrote my initials right next to the rover. And so, um, you know, after that, not really thinking that much about it. Mm -hmm. After that, um, got in the, in the uh, lunar module, <laughs> took off, gets home, and of course, afterthought, he's like, why didn't we have like a camera to take pictures of the last footprint or mm -hmm. to take pictures of Tracy's initials? But the thought was that they were trying to, because it's the last mission, they're taking the most moon rocks they could, mm -hmm. the most samples back, so anything that they didn't need, they were leaving there. So they left all the cameras. Mm -hmm. But hindsight, he said, I wish we would have thought further because we would have taken the camera, taken the pictures, thrown the camera off the ladder and kept the film, but <laughs> they didn't. So, um, but when I, he got home, I think it was in passing, he didn't really think that much about it, but in passing, he said um, that he had done that, and as a nine-year-old, I think that, um, you know, it's like, oh, well, that's kind of neat, you know, but not realizing yeah. it. But now, it, as today, of course, as you get older, and, and 50 years now, almost 50 years since it's, it's been, um, 
you think back and you know as dedicated um, that daddy was in his work and here he is on this mission and he is um, got all these important things to think about it's pretty neat that in the midst of that he was able to just say oh I'm still thinking about her yeah, you know. so that's and I'm pretty fortunate that's pretty special that's love <laughs> okay you know pretty special love but so okay, so one more, thing, one more thing. If you could send now a message to your father, what would you like to tell him? Right now, um, I'd like to tell him, you know, I hope that I'm, I'm trying to honor his legacy, trying to, to expand and, um, you know, keep his legacy going. You know, Daddy was, he was an American hero. He was a naval aviator. Um, but he, and he was a pioneer, and unfortunately he didn't, I mean, he didn't like being the last man on the moon. He wanted somebody to go, more than anything. Um, but he was also a wonderful father, and a wonderful grandfather. And um, I just, you know, I want people to remember what he wanted people to know. He tried to inspire children to dream the impossible because he that's what he did and he said um you know if i'm my parents were immigrants from czechoslovakia and i came here and i grew up in the suburbs of chicago and all i wanted to do was fly airplanes I wanted to fly jet pilots off of aircraft carriers that's all i wanted to do but look where i ended up i walked on the moon and um, he always said, if I can do that, you can do whatever you can do. You can do dream the impossible, because if I can do what I did, you can do that too. And that was his inspiration to children and, um, and to people. OK, thank you very much for being so kind of sharing these memories with us. And you were wonderful. Oh, thanks, Maria. Thank you very thank much. You very much.